Hi there, the stranger of the econ has hit 50 subscribers and I'm ecstatic. I'd like to thank you all for subscribing. Since the channel has hit a mini milestone, I thought it would be a great opportunity to introduce myself and to explain a little about why I'm creating a YouTube channel about economics, the dismal science. My name is Lucas Chu and I'm not an economist. I have a BBA or a Bachelor's of Business Administration with a concentration in finance from a university. I've taken quite a number of economics classes as a prerequisite for my degree, and I have to say that I enjoyed them all for the most part. I definitely enjoyed them over the accounting courses I had to take. But my interest in economics and markets began well before university. I've always been fascinated with why people do the things they do from an economic standpoint, and many of life's decisions are economic decisions. If we take British economist Lionel Robbins' definition of economics, Economics is a science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses, then economics is really all-encompassing, beyond dollars and cents. From a nation, to a community, to a family, to an individual, they all have ends, or goals, and scarce means, or resources, and there are definitely many alternative uses for those scarce resources. Money is usually the resource people associate when it comes to economics, but it's not just money that economists set to analyze. Stanford economist Alvin Roth won the 2012 Nobel Prize in Economics for his work in analyzing and improving the kidney transplant matchmaking process. Economics is fascinating to me and I'm hoping to the public because it's intellectually accessible. You and me might not have a lot to add to the discussion about mathematics, chemistry, physics, or engineering without a university degree. But in economics, even laymen can understand economic concepts relatively easily and follow economic debates and discussions. Cambridge economist Ha Jun Chang wrote, 95% of economics is common sense, deliberately made complicated. And I would agree with him. I remember sitting in economics classes, looking at complex and intimidating formulas on the whiteboard and thinking, that's a really complex way to say that if this goes up, then that goes down. Don't let the lingo and the formulas scare you away from economics. Economic concepts such as opportunity cost, utility, and sunk cost are easy to understand concepts because they occur all the time in real life. What's the opportunity cost of taking a new and exciting job versus staying with your current boring but reliable job? What's the utility that I would receive by buying this boat? Anybody who's in the third year of a four-year university program that they can't stand will understand the concept of sunk cost. Economics is also fertile ground for debate and intellectual stimulation. We have economists from esteemed universities debating the fundamentals of the field. Classical economists, neoclassical economists, Keynesians, Hayekians, behavioralists, and Austrians, to name just a few. These aren't crackpot economists debating and discussing. Some of these schools of economic thought have supporters from some of the most esteemed universities in the world. Now, because of all the different and conflicting views, economists have a tough time providing a straightforward consensus answer to the world's many economic problems. And as a result, it's labeled as a dismal science. But for me, to write off the entire field due to the field's inability to provide a straightforward answer is short-sighted. Economic scope is broad, very broad, and economics is difficult. Economists can't run traditional double-blinded experiments with countries. Even the same country can be very different throughout its history. The economy of the United States in 1776 is vastly different from the economy of the United States during the Roaring Twenties, which is drastically different from the go-go 80s, which is once again dramatically different from the economy of the United States today. But to me, all these elements, warts and all, make economics fascinating. And I ask, if not economics, what should we go by? How should we pilot the economy or allocate resources? Common sense and gut feelings? It's been said that common sense is just a collection of our biases and preconceived notions. It was once common sense to assume the world was flat and that the universe revolved around the Earth. With all that being said, I plan to bring you guys more economic stories from the past and the present, as I'm fascinated by the sophisticated wheelings and dealings of those living in the past, as I am about the present and the future. I can't imagine traveling across medieval Eurasia with a bunch of camels, looking to buy, sell, and trade on the Silk Road without a laptop, GPS, and the internet. Now, this channel is not political, as I believe economics should be apolitical. There should be no liberal economics and conservative economics. There should just be good economics and bad economics. I know that economics is a heavily politicized weapon, but this channel isn't attempting to do that. There are enough YouTube channels out there that cater to every political leaning and stance, and the world doesn't need me to add another one. Now, those who've checked out other videos in my channel will notice that I have many videos on investing and the stock market, as that is another interest of mine that's tied to economics. 
However, this video is probably long enough as it is. I'll talk about the investment and stock market side of this channel in a future channel update. Once again, I want to thank all you subscribers. I really appreciate the support, and I hope you can share this channel to people you think would enjoy the content on the strange world of econ. Till next time. Thank you.